the webinar is live now. We are waiting for the audience members to join. And I already see that the attendees count is going up. I'll wait for a couple of more minutes before I can start. All right, we have, uh, our attendees are pretty quick today. Okay, hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar. I am Shweta Dandapani, I'm the community builder at BWasteWise. Uh, many of you would have seen my face in several of these uh, webinars. BWasteWise uh, organizes webinars to address the gap in knowledge in the space of uh, waste management globally. And uh, we have been in, fun we have been operational since 2013. So it's a decade of BWasteWise this year. And uh, we're really thankful to all our moderators and our contributors who've been part of this decade-long journey. The topic for today's webinar is Waste Data in Emerging Economies, Something is Not Right. Uh, we have Mansoor Ali, who, is, uh, who has been a moderator with us in the past as well. Mansoor is a solid waste uh, management expert. And uh, if you have missed other webinars where which he has moderated as well as taken part in, please head to the video panel section of our website and you will find it there. Uh, Mansoor has put together a pretty uh, interesting panel, I would say. We have uh, Sanjay Gupta, who's a waste management specialist from India. We have Shiza Aslam, who's a circular economy ex uh, expert from Pakistan. And we also have Tariq bin Yusuf, who's a solid waste management consultant from Bangladesh. And uh, we received your audience questions that have been passed on to all our panelists, which will be included in the conversation. Any other questions you have, please use the Q&A section for your questions and uh, the panelists will pick it up as and when it is relevant to the conversation. Over to you, Mansoor. Uh, thanks, Shweta, and welcome everybody. Um, we are very excited to, to have all of you. I would like to just uh, share my screen uh, if I can, and then we will start very quickly. So let me see, where is this? Oh, oh yes. Can you see, see it now? Yes, we are. Yeah. It says, we see a Word document, actually. Is Not your. Yeah. We don't see your uh, presentation. Okay, let me close it. <laughs> we just practice it just now. <laughs> I know. Anyway, I can do without slides as well, not an issue. <laughs> so yeah, thank thanks for joining. I mean, there are there are uh, a number of things uh, we would like to to share with you. And uh, the this topic is is close to 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 my heart because uh, what what we are trying to do is to um, create a common awareness um, and listing down the the some of the common issues. Uh, so we when we go to big meetings, international solid waste congress, for example, coming up in two three months time, there are at least four or five meetings. We speak uh, uh, some sort of common language. We raise these common issues. And we can we can talk about this. We are very lucky to have this panel with us. Uh, these are the people who worked on the ground. Um, as far as I know, they they handle the waste many times with their hands, but they are also very good in analyzing and and reporting the data. So when it comes to uh, the the waste uh, data, there are a couple of very important challenges I would like to share, and that is the motivation um, for for this webinar. Um, when it comes to city level data, it is particularly difficult uh, to get the right data. While data is, is very important to make critical decisions, whether it's government is making those decisions, whether politicians are taking those decisions, or whether any donor NGOs are involved with, with those decisions. Uh, these are uh, the, 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 the set of data is very important. But in many countries, that data is outdated, not available. And it is quite a challenge because it's sometimes it's based on a student's projects or sometimes it's based on uh, another small project, donor's project, or and sometimes it's not shared as well. There is also, there are lots of assumptions which are not correct. And uh, I mean, I continuously review and look international work, international publications. Um, some of those assumptions, for example, government is responsible for collecting data and government will provide us updated data. Uh, we go 
uh, with that as a assumption, and that is always not not right. Uh, governments does not have capacity uh, to to collect data. They do not validate their own data, and in some cases, they don't have any data. So some of those those assumptions are not correct, and these are common assumptions uh, in in big programs. Also, the systems are very different in developing economies. There are parallel systems. There are informal sector, a small scale provider, and there are lots of things which are not on the map and not registered, but they're still operating. So system understanding is still very vague. And because of that, the data uh, available or provided uh, doesn't match. And then there is, uh, I was reviewing a re very recent publication, which is a quite a big publication. And it, it assumes uh, interestingly that the basic streams are separated in developing countries and they, they reach the landfill sites and they, they uh, you know, they are, you can test those. And actually waste streams are mixed. Waste is taken out. Waste is, uh, you know, added to, to those streams. So you don't get waste streams. And then the supporting infrastructure, like how many vehicles are moving, way bridges and all that, that's also uh, not there, which can help you in testing. So my key message is that we need to create an awareness about this issue. Uh, we need to have a very important, very clear rethink about how this data is collected, how we go, go step by step about that, and who can take responsibilities. And we take this common message wherever we go and wherever we represent. So the panel is very exciting. I mean, these people, I'm, I'm very impressed because they, they can go and challenge anything in the waste world. They're very well known. And without any further ado, I would like to invite uh, uh, Dr. Sanjay Gupta uh, to share his experience on the sector. So thank you, Shweta, and thank you, panelists, and thank you, participants. Okay. Uh, thanks, Mansoor. Uh, I, I think you, you just uh, put the right words uh, before we even uh, see many of the things you have been in the sector for a pretty long time. Uh, um, let me start with three key examples from India, and, I've, and, and the span is pretty big. I, I'm talking about nearly uh, 35 years of experience. So the first Timarpur Waste to Energy plant in India came in 1987. And it was a Danish technology, proven technology at, very, at that time. India spent over 900 million rupees to set it up. It didn't run for a week. Uh, and the reason was that the data provided to the Danish technology for processing that waste, for producing energy, was incorrect. So 1987, nothing much has changed since then, unfortunately, that proved. Next, we come to 2005, we have a Trivandrum compost plant. The municipality uh, does its own uh, estimation of organic waste supply. They sign a contract with the compost uh, private company, promises them 300 tons of supply, and then they realize they can't even get 100 tons of organic waste. And eventually the plant fails, the municipality loses the case, and they have to pay a huge amount of money to the company because they set up the system for 300 tons. And eventually the plant is closed down because of the dispute. More recently in 2010, uh, you come to Gorai dump site for a methane capture project from the dump site, which was apparently 40 years old. And some people say even more than 50 years old. They make all the estimates, very big companies. And then when the actual methane capture starts, they realize that they can't make the money for according to the uh, estimates and the investment that has gone into it is way beyond what they would earn either as a carbon credit or, or, or as a gas extraction and, uh, and it fails. Just giving this background that how data or incorrect data leads to different kinds of failures, not just in, the, in terms of investment and losses, but also for the very purpose that you want to do something is never uh, uh, never achieved. What are the very common sources of the way we collect our data? If you see uh, what I have seen in most of the developing countries, 
that they will take one or two sources of waste generation data and then eventually extrapolate with either households or population. Today's cities are so complex. Even, even a city of 100,000 is so complex that taking a couple of sources doesn't help. Second, if you go to the government agencies in India, for example, pollution control boards or central pollution control board, uh, data is done by uh, institutes which are uh, specifically given this source. What they do, they do three cities, then they will come to an average and then they extrapolate to the population. Other cities will follow without doing the actual survey of waste generation and composition. And then eventually make all the wrong budgets. In India, you'll find uh, very strange things because the budgets are allocated based on the population that they have made gen waste generation data based on uh, some city has done of the similar population, but your city doesn't produce that. For example, an industrial city uh, and a city where agricultural activities have different kind of waste generation and composition, but they don't take those into consideration. The third is, and very common, uh, it also happened in Europe in the initial stages, that way bridge measurement. So how many trucks are going and then you take it for seven days, somebody does it for 10 days, and then you divide it by the population, you say, okay, my city generates. But on the other side, your study says only 70% of the waste is collected and 30% remains on the street or in the drains or the empty plots. That's not taken into consideration. And then we eventually, we don't get the data that we need. And then uh, a, a typical government uh, type of data, mostly not, not just India, many, many countries that do it, that, that uh, extrapolation method. And also not con taking consideration that are institutions, the industrial system, the agriculture system, and each city has a very cultural, culturally different kind of waste behavior. That I, I think it was a very crit critical thing when you do such studies. What we found while implementing projects, I've been implementing projects since uh, 2002. A slum at times can produce a lot more waste because there are so many activities going on. For example, Dharavi in Bombay. The billions of cases of different waste material businesses going on, billions of cases of uh, uh, vegetables are sorted, fruits are sorted, and they stay there. So if you take a typical slum data saying that 250 grams per person per day, it doesn't work out for Dharag, and then you, you end up doing that. So this process of not taking into consideration of things, but at the same time, and I'll come to that a little later on, that how we can probably correct it. A classic example, uh, a study that I did in 2002 to 2005, and I, I found very interesting. The, these studies were done between 2001 to 2005. Study one, a very reputed academic institute did, and it's at Delhi's waste generation is 4,000 tons. Study two, by a multilateral agencies, estimated it to be 5,000 tons. Study three, by another, uh, Engineering Institute, given the job of estimating Delhi's generation, put it at 6,000. A study four by the municipality in their own DPR, they put it at 8,000 tons. Now look at the variation in five years between 2001 to 2005. This is the Delhi West generation, 4,000 to 8,000. And you can laugh at the approach they might have adopted. You can laugh at the methodology they would have adopted. It, it doesn't make sense. And then you make all your policies based on what this data says. Which one do you take it for granted that, no, this is the probably the closest possible correct data. And I go by that. Uh, and these are multilateral agencies. These are specialist agencies. These are academic institutes doing that. So what I feel uh, is that incorrect assessment of environmental pollution and impact on public. Any incorrect data has a huge impact. Let's not talk about the economics uh, right now, but anything that since it, it is a matter of uh, environmental health and public health, it doesn't solve. Incorrect data actually creates more problem. And Timarpur is a very, very good example of that. And then you start planning and budgeting and it goes haywire. Here in India cities, we have over budgeted, here in India, we have the cities which are under budgeted. And it all happens because our data are incorrect. If your diagnosis is incorrect, you are never going to get the right medicine. 
no doctor can prescribe that. The bigger problem in the context of India is that violations of, since you have incorrect data, you have incorrect planning and in, incorrect implementation, then the National Green Tribunal comes in and then you, they put it hefty penalties. In, in recent terms, the penalties are way beyond the budget of the municipality. They've been, because they wanted to create uh, this pressure so that they start working. Uh, and probably one of the things that is closest to my heart, the climate change impacts, huge. People have put that four to 6% of GAG, some people say eight to 12% of GAG is because of unmanaged waste or mismanaged waste or waste which is openly burned, happens because of that. And all of this has led, at least for the context of India and also uh, many African countries uh, without naming them, has led to this loss of public trust in agencies who are doing these studies. And at the end, uh, looking at the time, I'd only say one thing. The way waste data is being collected is not so difficult as it has been uh, made out to be. Uh, either it is the lack of capacity among the agencies that do it, or probably they're not so passionate. People who are at the ground and take the entire waste to the MRA for sorting and then they find out what is coming and what is not, you, you really get good quality data. Even the waste generation data, forget about the waste composition data, even if you concentrate on the waste generation data, ask the city managers to weigh it for say 30 days. They have all the resources, all the vehicles and you have the way agrees. At least one data that you will get correctly is the total waste generation. So clean up every day for the 30 days and you see what it comes out. You have one correct data and the rest can be sorted out through that. So that, that's the point I would like to make that it's not a monster that has been there not letting us get the right data, but we can certainly correct it. And there are easier ways of doing it both in terms of approach and the methodology. Over to you, Mansoor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. Very, very insightful, exciting. And you brought a number of new points to the discussion. Uh, all the participants can uh, write their questions in Q&A and we can take them in groups. Uh, our next speaker is, uh, is Shira, Shira Aslam from uh, Pakistan. Um, so we will do the discussion after the, uh, we'll keep aside at least 30 minutes uh, for discussion. That's the, that's the aim. Um, and that's why we keep the presentation uh, short. So I hand over to Shiza now for the next part uh, of the discussion. Over to you, Shiza. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mansoor and everyone. So I'll rightly jump to the main aspects of my presentation. Uh, so today, uh, for this panel or this discussion, we are talking about the data and the context and the system understanding and some of the leeways that might be missed if we are just looking at the stats or some of the quantum related compositional aspects in the data understanding or the understanding of waste management in general. One of the key points that we have observed is that uh, statical or data, typically the tools or the methodologies that have employed just to understand the whole waste management uh, system based on stats or data, they just uh, provide a uh, holistic perhaps uh, overview of quantities with respect to maybe how much of a waste is generated at household level or stream level, how much of a disposal is happening, uh, which is sometimes questionable what sort of disposal that uh, they uh, mean, or the recycling uh, rates. Um, that even the stats or the data valid uh, validations become very critical or uh, complex when the informal sector or the other parallel economies are present within economies and that not necessarily always included within most of the data tools that we have available or transform developed countries or high middle income countries that we have seen. Uh, one critical aspect that we have seen when employing such uh, tools and methodologies are there's very limited understanding or room to explore the system. Uh, within the cities or neighborhood even, and the contextual understanding, including the social, uh, socioeconomic behaviors, um, the practices, the community uh, relation to the practices or the waste composition in general, but also what sort of uh, economic activities that is being happening, uh, because it's not so streamlined or structured uh, that we have separate residential areas, neighborhoods, or industrial zones in, in low middle income countries that is typically seen. So it's very interlinked and twinkled around. Uh, 
which again leads to perhaps various environmental and public health that's need to be included and fairly shared in the stats and data reported, uh, whether at neighborhood level or community level, uh, which again emphasize the need that we need to combine stats and data with the system and contextual uh, understanding. I'd like to share one, uh, one example for that, just to elucidate what I, I just like mentioned. Uh, recently, in, 2000, in late 2020, in the beginning 2021, uh, we applied a waste white cities tool, which is a recently established uh, methodology by UN Habitat uh, and acknowledged by various other uh, and multilateral entities, including GIC, World Bank, and others. Uh, so we applied this particular methodology for Karachi, which is a mega city and has a population of around 20 million. Um, this is just a snapshot of uh, the fact sheet that has been produced under WECT and is available on their website as well. Uh, when we applied, uh, we did a typical uh, household level uh, survey that just uh, Sanjay has explained, collecting waste from household level. And it also has a, a component to estimate commercial level uh, waste generated. And that elucidates to, for instance, if you have information on how much restaurants you have, um, how much of uh, commercial institutions you have for education and others, uh, unfortunately, in case of Pakistan, and I would say that would be a case for many other low middle income countries, we did not have such data present uh, officially at all. So as a proxy, what was assumed that we will assume 10% of the household generation would be equivalent uh, to the non-household uh, generation, not just the number, but also the composition as well. Uh, so one can imagine uh, the economic uh, activities, they might not necessarily produce the same compositional data that would assume from household level. Uh, also, um, just from the composition around, it suggests the potential recycle from household itself. Um, you can see a picture here in the, uh, in the very bottom. It says that um, metal could be three tons per day, glass could be 122, paper and cardboard 390. So if we just see the quantum or the stats of it, it represents a very good case for material recovery facility, perhaps at a neighborhood level or at even a city level for Pakistan. What it doesn't include or elucidate is a parallel economy, that how, why it doesn't happen so forth in, in Karachi, let's say, why the municipalities hasn't captured those uh, econo uh, economic potential or the potential from recycled food, although they are aware that those elements or quantities are procured. Again, the system understandings is not necessarily communicated and it creates problematic scenarios when a strategy or designing has been put forth. And just to elucidate, uh, we then reached out to one of the local communities we visited. Uh, it is part of a low income country, uh, community in, in Karachi, um, which is closer to coastal areas and has a um, boat construction as a very active uh, economic activity there. It also has export units there. Um, again, if we correspond again to the proxy that 10% of the consumption of household is equal to the economic or commercial entities, we do not necessarily see uh, rubber gloves uh, in the municipal household stream. Typically, we do not see construction waste, typically boat construction waste, which is could be seen in municipal waste because that's uh, a lot of it is uh, wood uh, and is styrofoam, I could say. Um, but also the textile waste, it has a lot of components of oil and grease because they were used to clean the industrial equipments there. So the nature of the composition or the contamination is very different from what we would actually assume from the household waste. And that again would create a problem if the understanding or the planning is done on the basis of again household uh, waste management scheme. And this is just to explain a one uh, economic side of one community um, but we can imagine Karachi has diverse economic activities, and that could be said so for the many other developing countries uh, and mega cities as well, um, and might miss various significant streams in the data collection. Again, the cultural practices are not necessarily captured within those tools and um, methodologies. For instance, uh, here I show there are two coastal communities uh, established right at the heart of this um, coastal area. One is called Mubarak village, which is a bit in outskirts and mostly known as uh, known for its touristic uh, activities. On the other hand, there is a mature colony, uh, which is again a low middle income con uh, community, it might be called a slum area, which is typically more known for fishery and boat construction. There, uh, um, I mean, disposing in the waste stream or nalas uh, or drainage system or rightly directly into the C was more common practice as a mismanagement in, in case of lack of or absence of waste management collection from households 
uh, from the municipality. In Mubarak village, open burning was more pronounced. Uh, in many cases, uh, municipality might not readily take uh, the steps to provide these services to those communities. Here, maybe perhaps community-based uh, uh, organization or NGOs might take uh, responsibility. And for them to understand what sort of practices and relationship and understanding of the system has been is critical for them to define and design the planning systems. Just to uh, elucidate on these uh, experiences, a few recommendations that it's very critical to define and combine both the data and the contextual understanding uh, of the area. One good uh, activity could be done in complement to these methodologies would be simply making visit to some of the neighborhood or some of the communities and perhaps talk to those communities uh, and industry or available people in, in responsibility that can give you uh, maybe in a, in a feasibility aspect and give you a lot of insights uh, to what is happening and how the planning should be done. Uh, in conclusion, I cannot stress enough that stats with concept uh, context would lead to effective waste management strategies. Uh, one alone uh, would be a barrier and may lead to significant economic and environmental and health impacts. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Manju. I'll stop here. <laughs> Thank you, Shiza. No, that's very good. And um, I'm very happy to see some good comments and questions coming in. We will take them uh, in groups or uh, one after the other. Uh, there are some bigger questions. There are some direct questions. So we will handle them. And thanks again to all the participants. Uh, so good point, Shiza, and very applied presentation. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Tariq bin Yusuf, Dr. Tariq bin Yusuf from Bangladesh uh, is, is with us. And uh, he really, uh, he shared some, some interesting studies he done recently. And some of those are really talking about streams and different, you know, very good desegregation. So I was personally very impressed with what Tariq has done. And Tariq has a track record of uh, working um, in the region, internationally, and in Bangladesh. So Tariq, uh, over to you. Uh, and we are expecting some conclusions and suggestions from your side as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So I have a long experience to work with the local government institute, Dhaka City Corporation, and directly in the waste management sector, both uh, in the field as well as uh, you see, and also as an academia and research. Research. Okay, so we carried out a detailed city-wide uh, waste generation and characterization survey in Dhaka with the support of uh, JICA Technical Corporation. And that is a, uh, you see that one kind of capacity development program where we were involved in the field, in the survey. So first we did it in 2005 for the preparation of the first uh, Clean Dhaka master plan or 2005 to 2015. And then again in 2018, uh, we revised the Clean Dhaka Master Plan for 2018 and 232. So uh, we carried out the detailed waste generation per capita based on the income groups, low, middle, and high. Uh, we carried out the waste composition as well as some laboratory analysis. We considered the household, commercial, and you see the street waste. In the stream, we excluded the industrial, medical, and e-waste. But though now it's part of the municipal waste, it's okay, in the cities. Okay. Uh, then, you see, we also consider both the season, dry season and wet season. We carried out the survey. We also carried out the time and motion survey uh, for analyzing the vehicle capacity and its proper utilization. We also survey on the recycling sector, including the waste pickers, to find out the recycling rate. Though it's a very challenging, because the recycling sector is informal, is unorganized, and unregulated. So we also uh, measured the waste, incoming waste in the landfill site. We also survey the Secondary transfer points are also the illegal dumping points. We carried out the awareness survey, the household as well as the business. 
also carried out the, you see, the survey on the cleaners as well as the truck drivers. Also, some CPOs and NGOs are involved in the waste collection process. So, also, we carried out survey on that. Uh, their, you see, way of delivering, collecting waste that we carried out. So, based on this uh, a comprehensive data, we prepared the waste flow diagram. The waste, and it was very helpful for us to uh, design our waste collection system, treatment technology, as well as improvement of the final disposal side. Yes, we have also found some challenges and limitations that we need to hear. Because you see, still in the cities in Bangladesh, uh, you see from the census, we are not getting the actual uh, uh, population, including the income group. Because you see the migration is also a big issue. Okay, so as the waste segregation is not done, that we are getting the mixed waste. So sometimes it's very difficult to find out the recycling rate, the proper, you see the quantity as well as the quality of the recyclable waste. There is a huge gap between the informal and the formal sector. That is very important. You see, if they are not linked, it's a very difficult to carry out this type of uh, survey. So uh, yes, the, that is also mentioned that you see the uh, reliability of the data based on the representative samples. It's okay. That is also big here. Yeah. So, uh, and we need to update this data because we, during, uh, after the first survey, every year we prepared the waste reports, but we did not, uh, you see, carried out. And that is because of the resource limitation, because the survey needs some money for tools, equipments, and also some incentives. But you know the local authorities, they are not interested in, uh, you see, investing money in the planning or some survey or some research. So it's a one kind of institutional culture and practice. So there is a need of, you see, governance is also a big issue because sometimes you see those are involved in the waste collection process. They are not open. It's okay. So uh, you see the institutional reformation is also a big issue. So uh, in Dhaka city, we developed the waste management department, including uh, the engineering, department as well as the conservancy department, also the social planning, they were involved in the whole uh, waste management process. So the capacity has been developed so that uh, when we carried out the uh, revised master plan, those city officials and the staff, they were involved in the uh, process. It's okay. So uh, we have some opportunities still because uh, you see, uh, recently in 2021, in December, <coughs> solid waste management rules in Bangladesh, it has been formulated where the uh, the solid waste management plan and annual reporting, it has been emphasized that all the local government institutes, they will have to prepare their waste management plan. So without any survey of the waste generation, as well as the characterization survey, they cannot prepare this type of data. So there is a need of, you see, it needs some budget or something like that, and also the knowledge and capacity. It's okay. In that case, we need to think of some standard simplified tools or something like that so that they can uh, easily do this type of uh, survey. That is very important. As well as there is a, you see, only in Dhaka city, there is a way breeze. But in the other cities, they do not have the, so how we can do accurately estimate the amount of waste is collected, that is also uh, important. So we have, uh, you see, we have followed some uh, guidelines from the JICA also, you see, uh, the waste wise cities tool is also well uh, written. And we also practice in other cities like uh, in Kunla and also uh, in Chittagang city. So we found that, yes, though there is a, uh, use gap, but it's very helpful for the cities. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Tariq. Uh, very insightful. And what what I, I, I really like about your presentation that you really 
did it very creatively. Uh, you you have used a lot of thinking and innovation when it is about that, that waste collection and waste streams in Dhaka. So we have uh, 25 minutes left and we also have some really interesting and good, good questions. Uh, some questions are um, straightforward. Uh, some of the speakers can answer those questions. And uh, some questions are a, a bit tricky. We will all try to answer them together. I don't know the answers of, of many of those questions. So we will take it as a team. So uh, there is a, a question about the steps uh, in data collection to, to Shiza. Keep the answers short. But later you can engage with the speakers. They are all available on LinkedIn and this is recorded and will be shared. So speakers, keep your answer to maximum one minute and then we will engage more in discussions together. Yeah. So one, one question is about the steps in data collection, uh, for example, in case of Karachi. So Shiza, if you take that, another question about the methods available, uh, uh, in, uh, you know, comparable methods, standard methods, or relevant appropriate methods available, uh, what which we can use. So that probably, Sanjay, if you can answer that. And third question is what you do with the data. In this case, uh, the, the question is uh, from, from Mega is about if you have data about the informal sector recycling or proportion of that, uh, how you use it in advocacy and policy. Uh, and Tariq, can you take that question? Yeah. So how what how to use the data for further development? We take these three question answers first, and then we we go to the next uh, stage of discussion. So over to you, Shiza. Now, thank you. So I have shared the link of the digital publication of the article as an answer to that question. But uh, in simply put, uh, we divided the. Karachi city in uh, three zones according to the uh, income in high income, middle income, and low income. And from each zone, we took uh, five communities from which we collected um, samples from 15 households each for seven uh, days. And with that, we then did uh, segregation, sorting, weighing. That is typically that happens. That was uh, the waste composition analysis at household level. We did the same uh, activity at transfer station, but that was just one day activity. Uh, we procured or just uh, took out a sample from a truck at the transfer station. Um, and then we did the same activity at Tenfield site just to see from how much of the waste is being produced or the composition at the household level and what are the actors or the composition that has already been taken out at the stage of uh, material uh, transfer station and then Tenfield uh, site just to propose if a material recovery capacity is to propose at what stage it should be proposed and what revenue or stream could be available to those. So that would be, I say, in nutshell. Nonetheless, I have shared the link, which has detailed uh, stepwise step approach. And as Dr. Mansour said, I'm also available on LinkedIn and happy to do it after this webinar. Yeah, sure. Happy to connect. Thank you. Thanks, Shiza. Yeah. Uh, Sanjay, that next question is about the tools and appropriate methods. Do you, do you want to say something about that? Thanks. A, a very short answer. Uh, I, I think whether it is a country or a municipality, they have to first understand why they want to collect the data. To give you a concrete example, if you want to prepare a landfill data, waste generation data is sufficient. But if you're going into processing, recycling, MRF structure, then you need to do more detailed data. And for that, there are very well established uh, methodologies from Europe, from America, which you can adopt. Dividing cities into zones, as, as Cesar talked about, low income, middle income, high income. You go further, you do institutional, commercial, resident, uh, and, and educational, because each one. And then you look at the category of the town, whether it is a class one town or class two town based on the population. And then, of course, you look at it, whether it is an agriculture based town or an industrial town, you, go, you don't expect a lot of organics coming to industrial town, right? So you, you contextualize, as I said, it very well in her presentation. You always put the context, look at the cultural behavior. So the methodologies are very, tools are there. The methodologies are there. It's the approach that the municipality needs to adopt to understand the waste generation and composition depends on the objective that it wants to attain. Landfill will have a more simplistic data collection. If you want to go zero waste, then you probably need to go a lot of the one of the one of the participants ask questions on uh, textile waste management. So you need to talk to the tailors and probably to sewing agencies, to boutiques and all that, and you need to target that and then see what can be done with that. 
So uh, I'll just say that there are plenty of methodologies. There are plenty of tools, no worries on that, but need to understand the objective and the approach that you will adopt to reach uh, those data collections. Yeah, over to you, Mansoor. Yeah, thank you. And uh, Tariq, there's a question about the use of the data, especially in government decision making or advocacy for, for example, informal sector data. Can you tell a bit about that and, and can you give us a, any ex example how it was used done in Bangladesh? Okay, it's good. I'm giving one example that uh, now I'm doing. It's okay. So what do we are doing with the four, uh, uh, you see, the urban local bodies. It's okay. That is three city corporations, big, and one is the municipality. So we started like that. We have uh, given them a questionnaire and explained to them to get some uh, uh, information that is uh, just only secondary as well as the assumptions. It's okay. Based on that, uh, you see, uh, we have prepared the framework plan, solid waste management, and then give them the idea that you see where they, they are, you see the baseline of the cities now at this moment. Then uh, you see what we are now doing is a is one kind of performance-based evaluation that if they will uh, participate in the uh, survey and also they can improve, it's okay. Then they, uh, in that city corporations or the municipalities, uh, they will get some fund for the infrastructure, it's okay. So in that case, you see some of the pilot interventions that we have taken, one is the, you see the survey, they will, they are in, uh, involved in the survey with us. And also based on this survey, we are preparing a uh, plan on a small word. It's okay. And then you see some uh, pilot activities we are taking in that word. Like now at this moment, uh, they are disposing waste in uh, seven or 10, you see the secondary points. So we are telling that if we can reduce it to five or seven or something like that, it will be a good achievement. It's okay. So how we can plan on that? So how you see, and also the, uh, you see some uh, collection trucks and equipments. It's okay. So how you can improve the collection? It's okay. Now at this moment, you see your uh, collection percentage is 50%. Uh, uh, so how you can increase it to 70%. So this type of, you see, involving them into the process, we are now started working with them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tarek. That, um, that's, that's also very helpful. Uh, there is a question about the, the global initiative. So there are, when we started, we used to work in uh, 80s, early 90s, American Water Works Association uh, data collection tools were very uh, useful and interesting. And we adapted them as all our speakers said that please try to adapt those. Recently, VEC tool and UNCHS Habitat uh, tools, methods, their academy, they are very interesting and relevant. ISWA, International Solid Waste Association, are, is also doing. Um, I mean, as at least three, three of the uh, participants raised that none of those are uh, appropriate for a mixed system, integrating informal sector well, uh, the system variability. So you need to really work and adapt those, but there is still a big need for uh, how we work in, in uh, countries. So all our speakers, if you are aware of any initiative happening on global tools, which are appropriate for developing, uh, developing economies, please uh, speak. And then I will take last two or three questions before I conclude. So is there anything I'm missing? Uh, Shiza, Sanjay, Tariq? Uh, in terms of tools, uh, Mansoor, you know that the Global Waste Management Outlook uh, did the waste flow diagram. Also, so is the uh, status, of, uh, uh, status of solid waste in all cities. I think those tools are pretty relevant today, but it requires a really in-depth study and not just a sample survey kind of thing to do the right kind of things. I think those uh, uh, both those can be adopted if somebody is really interested in that. So that is one thing that I can say. One thing I think I can suggest is uh, beside the stats and the fact sheet, if one can add maybe a summary of observations 
and uh, the notes on the community engagement uh, itself. I think that could be really helpful and it could be complemented with any tool that one uses because tools are there to complement or to support what the data and the stats shows and really depends upon the purpose why you are doing the data, uh, data collection to begin with. But having the set of notes and some observational uh, notes there, that would really help to understand the context and what is happening and what should be done. Yeah, and thank you very much for, for those. And then there is a question from Oliver uh, about the incentive for private sector and dynamics. So I think partly it was answered, but uh, uh, one of the aspects we, which we have not discussed, and, uh, discussed is the uh, if private sector or uh, a brand is doing CSR, then they are interested in certain streams of data. I've seen it in a number of cities and, and countries and they have uh, sometimes they have resources and capacity to get good quality data. What happened? Their connection with the government and policies are not always there. So that is not upscale or replicated. But I've seen some good quality data on things which they want to do. And some of the global chains, uh, for example, in textile, in plastics, uh, in some of they they have reasonably good data. But but the streams they are interested in. And, and but we can learn a lot lot from that. So it partly answered uh, your question. Uh, there is uh, uh, one question about the city. So I will I will connect you. Uh, it's anonymous question. Uh, uh, question. I, I suggest have a word with Tarek. Uh, what they are doing in, in Dhaka on Jaika. I found it very interesting, but I'm sure there may be more. And then I'll take two more questions. Before we conclude, uh, Sanjay, do you want to say anything on on any of the points? Yeah, just uh, just question on the role of the private sector engagement for, for uh, data collections. I mean, a lot of these data today are done by the private consultancy agencies, and more or less they are falling into the same trap of extrapolations and population. All that 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 doesn't work. So the scope is definitely there, the players are there, but they just need to understand the objective for which data is collected and then adopt the tools accordingly. Otherwise, whether it is a ULB or a private sector or an academy is not going to make a big difference. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I I I, I use the term private sector, but I meant the, the brand brands. Uh, for example, there's a tourism hotel chain which is collecting some very interesting data in in in, in one city, in actually in one country. So some of those big brands are coming in the waste world and, and which is quite interesting move. And they have ab ability, sometimes resources to attract and continue because part of their continuous business to do that. But you are you are you you are absolutely correct that um, some of, a lot of studies are done by some well-known consultants, and sometimes they are shared, sometimes they're not. So uh, thanks to all the all of the participants who shared various ring links. Uh, Professor Hassan is there, uh, and Gary is there. So one one example shared by by Gary uh, from Scotland is uh, uh, topolitics uh, .com. I found I just looked at the website. It's quite interesting. I'm not not sure whether uh, we can unmute you, Gary, to hear a bit more. But I'm sure you can share more details and links with other participants. And it's a very good initiative. I like the design of it. Uh, the government can use it, private sector can use it, people can upload their own data. For developing countries, the ownership and resources for such platform is, is important. But I'm sure, for example, UN organizations and others can come forward. Even some governments are quite able to do it. Some of the state governments in India are quite keen, for example, to do some of these things. So ecloptics is a, uh, uh, sorry, Topolitics is a very good example I found, again, where we can all learn learn from it. So we got now a few minutes left. Uh, I just would like to con uh, con uh, conclude and please make sure we continue this discussion. This is more a network and movement. Uh, I'm also team lead for Engineering Academy, Waste Burning Program. So we are doing a number of interesting things from, from that platform that is also on LinkedIn, Engineering X from Royal Academy of Engineering UK. So please connect, continue to discuss. I mean, there were some really key points coming out of this discussion. Sanjay touched very well on the, indirectly on the politics of waste data. And we have, when he talked about population and budgeting issues, I think that's very, very 
key. And in many cases, when people fly in and collect data in a week's time, this and that, understanding politics and population is very difficult. And in many Asian cities, African cities, it is it is a continuous challenge to based on the population. I really like the use of the term city level behaviors uh, used by, by Sanjay and every city has got a different behavior. That's lovely. So thank you very much for sharing that. And Shiza then talked about the community level behavior and understanding that. In order to understand the context of waste collection and systemic understanding, so I thought that came out from all three speakers very well. And um, it is it is really important not to jump in on data collection, generating numbers before we understand the, the context and behavior and culture fully. And we all do this mistake, including myself. But this is a this is a point came came out from all the all the uh, all the speakers. One point which I missed in the introduction, but also came very uh, very neatly from all the present presentation is the assumptions and validation of data uh, number of global tools have got these hidden as assumptions uh, which i don't think people generally test uh, we don't test we use them report is published maps are generated but those assumptions are quite some of them are quite killer assumptions so uh, i wanted to work on that if i have time but the assumptions are very important in data collection methodologies and testing those assumptions is far more important. So if you use any assumptions, check those. If you test, don't test it, write it in your report at least that these are non-tested assumptions. I think honesty is very important for all professionals and, and those some of those things we, we don't write because that makes the report complex, but but do it in other meetings or discussions like, like this one. So Tariq uh, talked about uh, city level streams. I love that discussion with Tariq because uh, we always start from population and household level data. I think what Tariq is trying to do and, and, and shared with us is to importance of understanding what's happening at the city level. If you city look at the city from the top and you see uh, a livestock yard with 6,000 buffaloes and a port and industry and a lot of uh, livelihoods taking place in, in slum areas, uh, you can't ignore it. And some of the waste, like Shiza said, the construction waste, it will not come in your samples. It, it, is, it is a very different waste. Yeah, nobody will give you that. So understanding city level streams um, and unpacking those is so, so important before we do our extrapolation. And when we do extrapolation from household waste, we always end up with, with numbers which are very difficult to validate. And we may miss bigger picture of the city. So again, master planning, city level planning, uh, anything to do with climate become very difficult when we when we use uh, bottom-up approaches. Bottom-up is very important. The way Tariq is doing, I, I really like that you have even small streams, irrelevant streams, but you unpack it and make them important. So, so that was very, very good. And all the speakers talked about adaptation and not to jump, take the tools and, and start generating data. So I thought that was also a key message to, to data collection, uh, to all of us. And finally, I would like to say that uh, this is a, in, an issue. I started uh, work in waste uh, world in the uh, mid eighties. And this is an issue which I found uh, continuously. It's very close to my heart. Uh, there are lots of questions, very few answers. And I'm, I'm sure we can all contribute contribute to this because it is an it is a problem which is ongoing, but we try to ignore it and and hide hide it under the carpet. But I think it's a time that we take these issues, have adopt a common language, uh, compile a list of some of the key issues, take it to the big meeting. This week there's a water week. I I feel sometimes very jealous that we don't have a waste week, but ISWA Congress is coming up very soon. And there are at least four or five big meetings globally. Why don't we discuss these issues in those meetings? So I stop here, Ashweta. Thanks for organizing this excellent discussion. And thanks to all the participants. We hope we can continue this discussion uh, in the coming months. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mansoor. Thanks a lot for putting together a very interesting uh, group of speakers, I would say. Thank you to the speakers, Shiza, Sanjay, and uh, Tari. And for the audience who have uh, 
been in rapt attention. We've had made quite a lot of questions. Uh, this is just information for the audience. The webinar will be recorded. It is being uploaded on our YouTube channel as well as on our website. And all the speakers, uh, including Mansoor, are available on LinkedIn. Please feel free to connect with them to discuss this further. And a uh, couple of more reminders to the audience. Uh, the day after tomorrow, we have another webinar, which is going to tackle uh, the issue of waste to energy. So please uh, get to our uh, website or, you know, you can check out on our LinkedIn page and you'll be able to sign up for that webinar. And in case you want to be informed about future webinars or about recordings, please sign up to our newsletter. Thanks a lot to all the speakers and all the audience uh, members as well. Bye-bye. Have a good evening. Good afternoon. Good day. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye.